Lighting for Profits, the number one landscape lighting show in the world. Oh, yeah. Welcome. I have no idea what's going on, guys. This this could be a major fiasco. To Lighting for Profits, your number one source for all things landscape lighting. Powered by Emery Allen. From lighting design, install, sales, and marketing. And I'm just like, okay, is this where I get beat up in front of my friends? Like, what's going to happen? We discuss everything you need to know to start and grow a successful landscape lighting business. That's what I like. Now, here is your host, Ryan Lee. All light, all light, all light. Welcome back to Lighting for Profits. Man, give it up for Chris Rios for helping me out, helping me out with the intro. He may have been a little intoxicated, but we got him to do it uh, a couple months ago in North Carolina. So thanks, Chris. <laughs> man, I'm excited to be here every week with you guys. What's up, Philip? Thanks for being here, man. Appreciate your support. Uh, Chris Rios, yeah, helped me out with the intro. So uh, he's the strongest man I know. He's a, he's, he's, he literally competes in the strongest man competitions i think he might be the strongest man in kansas and stuff like that so um cool dude but uh if you're looking to start or grow your landscape lighting business then you're definitely in the right pray right place man it's gonna be a long day it's already been a long day i can't even speak what's up tommy how you doing man good to see you uh if i can make it through and and figure out how to speak we're gonna make it through this one today uh here to help motivate educate to help you dominate whatever you're doing and hopefully it's landscape lighting. But uh, guys, help me out. Go to lightingforprofits.com or just go to Apple and uh, subscribe to the podcast. And don't forget to give me a review. I'd prefer five stars, but hey, if you don't like it, then tell me. I'm looking for honest feedback. So help help your brother out, you know? And uh, before we get started, just a couple quick reminders. Uh, May 5th and 6th, May 6th and 7th, whatever. It's coming up. It's like a week and a half away. I'll be in uh, Nashville at Clippicon. So I'll be, I got a little, they give me a little bit of time. I'm not speaking for hours and hours, but I am, I do have a little speaking engagement. I'll have a booth. So make sure to come find me, come say hi, and uh, let's get to know each other. And also, uh, if you want to come to Park City, Utah this summer, July 28th, 29th, 30th, the only way to come is to be a member of Landscape Lighting Secrets. So uh, that is going to be our first uh, mastermind here in Park City. July 28th through the 30th. So really looking forward to that, getting to know uh, the members of the program a little bit better. Every time I go somewhere, we get to hang out. And But I haven't met everybody in person yet, so uh, hopefully everyone will be there for that. Uh, our guest this week, guys, uh, is going to be awesome. It's Lee Baker. Uh, not awesome just because his name is Lee, but he's an awesome dude, okay? So he owns a concrete floor coatings business. And this this business, some people don't know what that is. Some people are like, well, who's who's Lee Baker? What's the concrete? I don't I don't get it. Right. So we're gonna ask him what concrete floor coatings is. But I'm telling you guys, this is one of the hottest home service businesses. We could have a duel basically. It's like, should you start a landscape lighting business or should you start a concrete floor coatings business? And and maybe we should do that. So Lee is gonna convince us all to start a concrete floor coatings business uh, because he's super passionate about it and. The reason why I wanted to have him on, I, I met him recently. Uh, we're in the same mastermind. Um, and the guy's a total stud. He he knows how to grow a business. I mean, he's literally gone from zero to, I don't know the exact numbers. Maybe he'll tell us, maybe not. But I know it's several million dollars in sales in a very short period of time. So uh, very, very impressive. And what's cool about him is he's kind of willing to, he's like an open book. He's willing to share uh, whatever whatever he's done, all his failures, all his successes, and so we're going to pick his brain. I'm super excited to have him on. And uh, he'll be on with just a few minutes. But, you know, the nice thing about having your own podcast, the, the nice thing about having your own show is you're in control. So, like, I can do whatever I want. I can sit here and talk about what I want. And Lee won't interrupt me, right? So, and Lee's, Lee's a nice guy. He's not an interrupter. But, uh, you know, some guests I have on, it's like, I, I want to get a word in. Like, I, I want to talk, right? So, I, I start the show on my own because then there's no interruptions. I mean, other than you guys, if you guys are here live on Facebook, on YouTube, thanks for being here. So say what's up in the comments. Let me know you're here. Uh, what's up, Jeremy? Lee Baker is a stud. I have to agree with you on that. So uh, basically, before we bring Lee on, I want to talk about uh, an experience real quick. You know, when I started my landscape lighting business, I uh, <laughs> this was in 2007. I had no idea what I was doing. 
Okay. And I thought I did. I thought I knew everything, right? <laughs> Not everything, but uh, I thought I knew more than I did. That's for sure. And for those of you that don't, don't know, what's up, Rob? Good to see you, my friend. Uh, what's up, Nick? It's been a long time, brother. <laughs> Brian, yeah. Hey, we forgot about that, okay? That was the old show. What's up, Paul? Yes. Thanks, brother. Appreciate you, man. Uh, so I started my business in 2017, or in 2009, and I ended up building that business with my brother and sold it in 2017. So, um, gosh, I'm all over the place. 2019. Let me start over. Okay, so I started the business in 2007, sold it in 2019. And uh, at the time, I, uh, like I said, I thought I knew what I was doing. Uh, I didn't. I didn't at all. And really, it was a lot of trial and error, uh, mostly trial, a lot of error. And um, my thinking was this when I started. I was like, okay, how do, we, how do we make money? At the time, I was making 100 grand a year selling software. So that was the first goal. Like, how do I replace that income? And when I started, I had one foot in, one foot out. So I was selling software full time and I was doing lighting full time. But as we both know, that, that doesn't exist. Okay. I was not all in on any one. My, my software sales started to suffer and I couldn't really take off with the landscape lighting business. So um, it, it was tough, right? But here was my thinking. I basically was like, okay, if I want to, if I want to create that kind of money, here's what I got to do. I got to sell three jobs per week at $4,000 each. Okay, that's twelve thousand dollars. Times that twelve thousand dollars by fifty weeks, that's six hundred grand, right? And I figured, well, there's fifty two weeks in a year, but we're not going to work every week, so fifty weeks, six hundred grand. Have you guys done the math like this ever? Have you done it? And it seems so simple, uh, six hundred grand. And I thought, well, you know, based on everything we've learned, it's like, man, we buy these lights for really cheap and sell them for a lot. We're going to make 50%, right? So 600 grand, cut that in half is 300 grand, split it between me and my bro. We're each going to walk away with 150 grand our first year. Is that right? Are you guys with me? <laughs> okay. You know, if you're with me that the math don't work like that. <laughs> so, well, one, I found out that you know, because it was not all in, I did not sell 600,000 my first year. I sold 350 grand. So already the math is skiwampas. And I was like, where's the money? All right. And I also found out that I forgot that you had to have insurance and all these other things. And that 600 grand, even if I did sell 600 grand, surely was not going to give us 300 grand in profit. So uh, learn the hard way. And when I found myself not reaching my targets, um, I would panic. Okay, I would panic. I would stop what I was doing and then just try something else. And that didn't work. You know, I'd stop and go to the next. I was chasing this shiny object. You probably heard of shiny object syndrome, right? You've probably done the same thing. It's like, maybe there's another way. Maybe there's another business. Maybe I'll do this. Maybe I'll do that. I see people get, trying landscaping, pools, uh, washing windows, doing Christmas lights. It's like, instead of solving the problem, just finding something else, right? And that doesn't, that doesn't really do anything. And so... um here's the problem. Okay. And, and I was reminded of this last week, right after the show, I was, uh, I left and I was going to my son's baseball game, I had to run home, pick him up, take him to his baseball game. And, uh, by the way, I'm having so much fun with that. He does not want to play baseball. He's a, he's, he's my only son. He's got a lot of anxiety. It's just not comfortable with, for him, but we force him to do it. And he's like, man, you guys don't give me, he's only, he's nine years old you guys don't give me a choice in life and you're supposed to let me have choices and all this stuff. And it's like, yeah, that's true. So my choice is if you want to continue playing video games, you have to play baseball. If you don't play baseball, you don't get video games. So he, he made the right choice and he plays baseball and we let him play some video games. So we actually do let him choose, but uh, I'm on my way home. And what's so cool about this is week, week one was, no, this was week one. So I'm gonna I'm gonna skip my story. In his game, you guys, he's like very timid kind of kid. He's not confident in his baseball skills. He doesn't want to be there. He's one of only a few kids that freaking hit the ball. I was so proud. I can't, I mean, normally he gets hit by the ball, right? He's a lefty, and they're, they're so used to pitching outside on the righties that he steps in and just gets hit usually. And I feel bad, and he's crying and stuff. But this time, he kind of steps away because he thinks he's going to get hit. And then he's like, wait, I could see it. And he swings, and he hits it. It was it was awesome dad moment. So. Really, really cool. But part of my real story is I'm driving home and I see you guys have seen this. And if and if you are this person driving, unfriend me right now. Don't listen. We got to break up because I'm driving down the freeway and I'm, I'm a big proponent. When you're on the freeway, 
you're supposed to go fast, right? Like, why would you go slow? And I hate it when people brake on the freeway. Obviously, if there's congestion and a lot of traffic, there's going to be the need for some brakes. But when you have like a wide open freeway, it, it just irritates me. I don't know why it's so bad, but when people are braking on the freeway, because, you know, you have a, most cars are automatics these days, right? So you have two pedals, you have a gas and a brake, right? Accelerator, brake, whatever you want to call it, okay? So it drives me crazy because people think because there's two pedals, there's only two options. You have to either be gassing it or braking, right? And so I see this minivan on the tail of this white box truck, like a 30-foot white box truck just doing his thing, not hitting the brakes, by the way, just going 65 miles an hour probably. And uh, this, man, this van, like one or two car lengths behind him, like really close, right? And it can't, it's like got this force that's just pushing it toward this white box truck because it can't seem to figure out its speed. And it's sitting here breaking, 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 breaking. And I'm like, you don't have to do that. Like there's a third option. There's accelerate, break, and then coast. Like let off the pedals. You don't have to break. It drives me nuts. So if you are a two-footed driver, we might have to break up. I'm just saying. So uh, what's up, Landscape Lighting Pro? I hope that's Keith. How you doing, man? Um, so we, if, if you guys are two-footed drivers, we got to break up. But I'm just saying, like, so I'm, re I'm reminded of this experience because I'm sitting here watching this, and I'm like, you know what? Like, actually, there's, that's the third option. The fourth option is you could just change lanes. Like, this, this minivan could have easily changed lanes and done his own thing. So I want to talk about those two scenarios, okay? Normally, I'm, like, trying to motivate you guys, right? And I normally wouldn't talk you into just coasting. But sometimes you need to coast. OK, uh, if you're like me, we, we either go like a thousand percent or we stop. Right. And so when I was starting my business and things weren't working, like if I tried a direct mail campaign and it didn't work, I would just stop and try the next thing. And that's that's like the equivalent of you driving on the freeway all in gas and then brake, gas, brake, gas, brake. And it's like it's not really the best thing. It's OK to take a break, pause. You don't have to hit the brakes. Just pause, let off the gas. Okay. And so you're not just running up against that white box truck. It's okay to let off the gas every once in a while and, and evaluate what you're doing. So the reason I share this with you is because I was guilty of that in my business. I would try direct mail and I tried it, you know, once or twice it didn't work. So I tried something else, try Google ads a couple of times, didn't work, try something else, try this magazine, didn't work. Listen, guys, this is a, this is a long game. Business is not an overnight thing. Um, maybe, maybe you think that when you listen to some of my stories, but it's not like that. Or maybe you hear other people talking about what they've done, or you see them and they're like, man, they're a multi-million dollar business. How do they do that? Well, I can promise you this. It did not happen overnight. And even if it seems like it was overnight, there was countless nights before that, where it was failure after failure, uh, and experience after experience. So just understand this, that you don't always have to be on the gas or on the break. There's that coasting option. Okay. And it's okay to slow down without braking, right? Um, and the fourth option is, you know, most people don't think about. This guy in the minivan didn't as he was like almost rear-ending this box truck. Sometimes we're following people that are holding us back. And we don't think that's the case because maybe they're a trusted family member, a friend, um, whatever it is. But it's okay, you guys, to change lanes. Like you don't have to keep accelerating and braking just to stay behind that person. Because they're doing their thing and they're focused on them and that's okay. And you need to start changing, find your lane, you know, change your lane, find it. If you want to go faster, then go into the fast lane. If you want to go slower, go into the slow lane. It would have been so easier for this, this minivan to just change lanes and not have to deal with the stress of gas break, gas break, gas break. They just move over and they, they, they can do their thing, right? And so I want to encourage you guys, if you want to go slow, fine, go slow. Like just move over and go, go your lane. You want to go fast, then speed up. Don't let these people hold you back because most people will hold you back. It's so uncomfortable when you start to succeed and you start to accelerate. It's like, well, wait a minute. What are they doing? Why are they getting success? How come they're so happy? What, what, what's, what's going on? And they start to question themselves. And what does it say about them if you're succeeding, right? So it's easier for them to just pull you back than try to catch up with you. So think about it when it comes to marketing. You know, if marketing's not working like it wasn't for me always, you don't have to hit the brake, stop what you're doing. You can pause, analyze, and see what's not working, and then get back on the gas. Think about hiring, okay? this We're all guilty of this. Most people hire. It doesn't work, so they give up. 
this is like one of the top reasons why people don't scale their business because they think it's impossible because they they hired someone it didn't work out and they're like see i just wasted six months training this person and now they're gone it's just easier to do it myself okay raise your hand if you've been there <laughs> they hit the brakes they call it quits okay but it's that third option pause analyze and re uh redecide what's what's the right strategy let's say your sales is not working you don't have to stop okay you can pause analyze and see what is not working uh because in most cases of all, like all my clients most of them have like really good things about them it's just one or two little things that are off and instead of just stopping and breaking just analyze pause analyze what this what the problem is figure out what it is make that fix and move on so uh don't be the guy don't be the guy that's driving down the freeway breaking all the time and if you guys are like that then we got to talk because that's a problem <laughs> okay so all right guys enough about me i got my 10 minutes of uh uh whatever you call it 10 minutes of of me time in now it's time for the guests so we gotta we gotta welcome our guest lee and i gotta figure out where the buttons are every week this is harder than you guys think give me a break you know uh guest intro music there it is so let's do it you guys ready if you are ready let me know and by the way if you guys have questions for lee post them in the comments if you're live if you're on the uh podcast just shoot me an email Welcome. Welcome to the show, Lee Baker. Thank you. Thank you, Brian, for having me. Man, I'm excited to have you here. Thanks for taking the time out of your day. Um, I, I'm really excited because you've had so much success in such a short period of time. I dare you to say that five times real fast. <laughs> but you're killing it in your industry. And, you know, obviously, you know, I'm a landscape lighting guy. Most of the people are on here are lighting, but there's so many parallels. There's so many things that um, I've learned from you in a short period of time that I think um, others can draw on. So thanks again for being here, man. Hey, thanks for having us. Appreciate the opportunity. So yeah, let's dig into this and uh, share some of our experience. So let's before before you kind of like introduce yourself and and talk about it. What is concrete floor coatings? For like, I I know what it is. I actually have it at my house, but not everybody does. So what is concrete floor coatings? Yeah, so it's it's basically we just add beauty to damage worn concrete. So it's um, you know, you start with just an ordinary slab. And that's the thing is most clients don't, you know, you think of concrete, you think of your patios, you think of your porch, and you're like, ah, it's cracked, it's ugly. And that's the thing that's neat about this industry is people are just now realizing, like, hey, there is something else you can do with this concrete. There is an alternative that can make it more appealing, add curb appeal. Um, you know, and that's where a lot of our business is parallel. You know, you're adding the lights to make them for feel more welcomed at home. And, you know, we're dressing up the concrete, you know, when they come home to their garage and they open the garage door and they pull in like now they're inviting home, you know, invited home as opposed to just like, Oh, it's this old concrete and just, you know, just my garage. It's a whole different space. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, no, it really does enhance the home. I, I think I saw one of my clients. That's probably the first time I ever saw it years ago. And I was like, man, that just, it makes it, it just feels clean and sharp and everything. And that was like one of my goals. Like, Hey, I want to be able to make enough money to where one day I can do that to my garage floor. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So why, um, why did you get into concrete floor coatings? Um, well, the short story is I didn't really have an alternative. Um, <laughs> so I, uh, I mean, I, I did it a little bit, um, through, you know, my background is restoration and remodeling. So, um, there was a restoration firm I was working for. We redid our warehouse, um, just to make it more inviting for people to come in. We did like contents restoration. So everybody would come in and take a tour of our shop. So we wanted to make it look like a lab. Um, when people would come in to look at, uh, what's up, Bill? when they would come in to take a tour of the facility, we wanted it to be like top notch. So, um, you know, so I had a little bit of experience. And so my wife and I went to a show in Nashville 
Uh, it was just like a, a remodeling show kind of for home builders, deck builders. And we kind of come across the booth. I was intrigued by it. I was like, hey, you know, we were just remarried, had five kids. So always trying to like work on the weekends, make the extra money, you know, to support the family and, and working a job, you know, full time job. And so as I, you know, looked into this, I'm like, man, this is great. Like I could get a couple of guys that could do this on the weekend. I could sell a little bit, you know, through the week and, you know, we could have a little side hustle. It's a one day job system. And so I went full bore into it and was like, Hey, sign me up. Let's get involved in this training. So I signed up for the training, went back, put in a, a two week vacation request. The day I'm leaving for my vacation between then and, and, uh, you know, the time I'm ready to leave, my boss is kind of, he found out and kind of what we were doing. And he's like, Hey, you got to kind of pick one or the other. And I was like, kind of made this commitment. I'm going for this. So we kind of parted ways, kind of like got into this business. And, um, the same day I left that job, I flew out on the airplane and went to a dealer meeting. And the next week I was being trained and, you know, from there, the rest is history. So Okay, cool. So, and what year did you start? When did you start the business? Um, I started the business in, um, it would have been 29 or 20, yeah, 2019 was when it was December of 2019. So we're only what, this is your third, three, four, third year in business. Yeah. It was 2017. I'm sorry. 2017. Cause this is our fourth. We're going on our fifth year now. Yeah. I probably screwed you up when I was talking about my story because I was like 2007, 2017, 2019, 2016, 2006. Yeah. It was 2017. We all have like these little things like memorabilia or something. So my team actually uh, bought me like this cutting board, like cheese thing and like had it engraved. And so is like your one day floor established and I'm looking at it now. It says 2017. Okay. So we know <laughs> it's engraved into a wood board. We know that's the date now. So five years in, I guess. Right. Um, yeah, it was December of 20, uh, 2017. Yeah. I don't, I didn't ask you this in advance, but I kind of want to talk numbers. So feel free to share as much as you'd be willing, but like what, what's an average size ticket for you? Uh, right now our average size is like, I think it's like 3170. So okay. Like so, I mean, I consider that high ticket, you know, it's a service. It's not like you can just have someone just like complete something online and get a bid and like, Oh yeah, I'll just spend three grand. Like you've got to go meet with them. I know you're big on like meeting with them, adding value, close the deal on the spot, which is like the same message I'm teaching with landscape lighting. Our average tickets tend to be higher, you know, like 7,500, which is one reason why I would say landscape lighting is better than concrete floor coatings. Anyway, I had to get that in there, but it's still a high ticket. Right. And so, um, how much have you been able to, uh, sell like are you comfortable sharing revenue numbers from last year or anything like that yeah i mean that's fine yeah that's we true. um yeah last year we did just just about three million last that's year that's awesome man congratulations dude so year four he closes the year out with three million bucks and at you know that's a lot of jobs at three thousand bucks so uh on the average ticket so what i mean wh how are you able to scale up that quickly because a lot of people start the business and at first it's like, you know, a hundred thousand and then a million and then 2 million. But how were you able to do it in such a short period of time? Um, it's, it's really just been, you know, just, I've, I've done a lot of coaching um, or I haven't done the coaching. I've received the coaching. So, you know, I, I have, you know, kind of given them a lot of credit, you know, and just helping me step through the different growths of our business. Um, but it's, it's mainly been just, you know, really the, you know, just looking at like our sales and building our sales and then, you know, having the production to follow behind the sales. Um, our keys to success have just been really, you know, putting out high quality work, getting reviews um, from clients. Um, that's, you know, right now that's paid off huge for us, you know, in year five, we had a lot of reviews and um, a lot of our clients will come, you know, when they seek out for uh, an estimate, they just say, you know, look, we really seen your reviews. We, you know, that's why we chose to call you. So, you know, those reviews really pay off big time. Hey, what's up, Brian? And um, so it's just been awesome to um, kind of, you know, the business is just kind of built. Um, it took me a while to get out of the field because I really uh, have always been in, involved in production um, in every job I've been in. 
And so, you know, I was kind of was the owner operator. And really, once I got out of being the owner operator, um, it, the business really took off. And so let me stop you real quick because yeah. you, you hit on reviews and then you jumped off like, oh, no big deal. But that's a huge deal. So can you share your insight on two things I'm interested in? One, how did you how do you gather your reviews? You know, how do you how do you get people that are excited about you to spend the time because it, it's not as easy as you think? And how do you eliminate the people from giving you a bad review? And then kind of a follow up to that is how how do you use that? How do you use your five star reviews to um, to gain to gain more clients with it? Man, we only have an hour, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> no, and and that's like one of the things that I kind of hit on on one of our podcasts is it's just you know when I started the business is it just is the review meant more to me than the check. And so we just adopted that philosophy within our company. Um, and so whenever, you know, we would tell the customer, you know, all the time, like, hey, you know, please leave us a review. It means more than getting the check from you uh, for the completed project. And, you know, my team, you know, as I built, you know, different employees and stuff, I told them that. And they just all would, it was kind of like the little saying, like they would always know that. Um, and so you know, those reviews, Matt, really did mean the most to us. Um, so we just kind of leveraged, you know, the reviews. Uh, we would ask for them. It was really easy uh, when you are the installer, the salesperson, like they put everything into you and then you ask them for the review, you beg them for the review. Um, and, you know, they they want to help you out. Um, and, and as long as you you kind of have that story and you play along with the customer, um, and let they know the value of that review and they can see it in you, like you'll get the reviews. Now there's, as I went um, and left the field from being in production, um, you know, you have to rely on your team to be asking for those reviews because, you know, the salesperson, when they're selling the project, they're not necessarily, you know, the customer's, you know, building trust with that person, um, but they don't really feel obligated to that person. Um, for me calling the customer and as the owner and asking for the review th I, they don't really have the like or trust, or I haven't really done much for them. They look at me as like, Hey, we're supporting your business, but you're asking us to do this. Right. Um, exactly. So really, you know, the key person for asking for these reviews is your technicians. So when the customer physically sees them doing the work and they're producing that job for them, the customers feel more obligated to help that person out. And so, you know, we, we give our guys a reward. And so it, it enhances the guys to ask for them. And in return, the guys will tell the customers like, look, you know, if you want to help me by, you know, obviously, you know, you could give us a tip or something, but this is one way that you can really help me because the company rewards me for doing a good job and you leaving us a review, just mention our name. And so we have like business cards, we have QR codes on the business cards for our technicians. So they'll give them to the clients and, you know, the reviews Love just it. flow in. That's awesome. Um, as What's far that? as like review gating and things like that, we don't do it. Like, it's just, we ask every client, we give them every card. And, you know, simply if I, I think most clients, they, they see that you are highly rebate, uh, highly rated uh, reviewed company that um, I think that if they know there's an issue, you know, obviously we have issues, we're all human but I get the phone calls and we take care of it. And, you know, I pride ourselves in how we take care of those um, circumstances because it really gives you a chance to show what kind of company you are. So if you, you know, if you're going to be the guy or the person that's going to, you know, Hey, that person's just a Karen or whatever, and you don't really dig in to find out what happened or why this issue happened. So you can keep it from happening or continuing in, in your company, then you got to take a look at yourself and how you're running your business because it's, I, I take, you know, a lot of pride in when there is an issue and how we resolve it. And it really gives us a chance to show who we are. And a lot of times those customers, um, you know, we've, we've grinded off whole floors. We've, you know, repaired them. Guys have mixed stuff wrong. You know, things happen. But, you know, those jobs, whenever things, things do happen, usually those are the ones that we get um, the most, like, clients referrals from, like their neighbors like, well, hey, we can't believe like she really come over and bragged about how you guys handled this situation. Right. And so it's it, you can 
you know, make something bad turn into something really good. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Thanks for sharing that. I know some of the things you said might, might seem simple to you just because you've been doing them, but a lot of people will take a compliment. Like someone will just finish the job and be like, Oh my gosh, I'm so grateful. You guys killed it. You know? And like you said, like they, they, they appreciate the technicians hard work. Like you're talking about concrete floor coatings. I'm talking about lighting installs. It's, it's similar. Right. And they really appreciate them. I mean, they brought, sometimes they bring out lunch for them, drinks, whatever. Yeah. And they're like, Oh my gosh, this looks so amazing. Thank you guys so much. Right. That's, that's when you need to say, Hey, that, that means a lot. I appreciate it. But you know, what would really help me out. Yep. If you'd scan this QR code and give me a review. And a lot of people are missing that little piece and they're sending an email like a month later or six months later. And by then, like you said, it's like, wait a minute, like I paid you thousands of dollars and what, what, anything else I can do for you? You know, and they're, they, they forgot that they loved you, you know? Right. Yep. So that's awesome. Thanks for sharing that. So after the reviews, you said, you know, one of the things you struggled with was getting out of the field. Um, I know people that have uh, worked in their business for over 20 years. Um, and they're still in the field. So, uh, maybe, maybe you struggled with a little bit, but you recognize it. What are, what are some things that you did, uh, to help you get out of the field so that you could focus on being an owner and, and less of an operator? Um, it really came down to, um, you know, it's probably about the time I started really coaching and teaching, you know, other people, um, how to start a floor coatings business. And, you know, it's like, you know, you have your business, that's your baby. And, you know, it's hard to let go. It's hard to like entrust your people. But it's like when, when I started teaching and training others, I'm like, Hey, I'm teaching these other people how to start and run a million dollar business within a year. And, you know, if I'm able to educate somebody for two days, like what am I missing that I don't have the, the faith and the trust in my own employees to go out and do the same thing? And so I had to take a hard look at that personally, and it helped me grow, you know, to see like, hey, if you're able to train others and they're taking off with these businesses, then, you know, you need to let go of what you're doing um, and, you know, let empower your people to really, you know, take off and become their own. And so it's um, it was kind of a, you know, like it, it was somewhat that, but it was also like I love installing like I love, you know, there's nothing better than to see what you can create you know, yourself. And so like, there's such a personal satisfaction that you get in a day, um, you know, by us coming in, these concrete floors are just trash. And like you, you know, the people to see the reactions on their face, you know, people come out, they laugh, they cry, they, you know, they almost faint, you know, it's just crazy. Like some of the reactions you see from them and you're like, okay, it's, you know, you, you really personally get rewarded for that. So, um, it's, it's, it was kind of one of those things that's kind of hard to walk away from. Um, and, you know, but, you know, it's been over a year and a half. I haven't really been involved in installs. I was last week. We um, had one of our employees get hurt in a bike wreck. And so I was like, hey, I had to, like, you know, see if my pants still fit to get, in, <laughs> get into them and get out there, get my work boots back on and uh, go out and install. So last week, a couple of days. So. But, you know, it's kind of fun to be back out there and work with the team. And, um, you know, I still showed them I had it. I crushed some jobs and got back earlier than them. And so it was good for them to see that. Well, so, but you, you mentioned something that it is hard. Like, you know, usually we are passionate about what we do. Like, you know, it, it's, landscape lighting is highly rewarding. I mean, you, you turn these lights on and it literally changes these people's lives. It affects their personal health, like everything. Right. And so it feels good and you want to be a part of that. And so there's that internal battle, but still, I think you know this, and that's why you coach it. If you really want to have the best business, it can't be the Lee Baker show, right? I mean, you, you got to have to have technicians and salespeople and customer service. And, and that's what, that's what completes the, to, to be a business that can give the five-star service and you can actually help more people that way. You know, you can scale and instead of helping a hundred people a year, 200, 500, a thousand, 10,000 people a year. Right. And so, um, is there, is there anything else specific you did or was it me or was it you just being, um, intentional with your time of not being in the business? Yeah. I mean, a lot of it is, it still comes back to like the dealers that we, you know, was able to teach and train. So it was like, for me, it was like, I had to make this choice, like either I'm going to get out of the field and, you know, just take off with this, um, you know, to help others. And so it's like, how can I, utilize my time and how can I have the most impact on so many different people 
it's like, if I stayed working in the field, like that's eight to five every day. So if I could get out of there and start developing and crafting out, like, you know, our membership program and things that we do, you know, to like train our dealers, then it's like, Hey, I'm able to like, you know, each company that we are able to train, it's not just that owner of the company, but I'm making an impact on like five or six or 10 or 12 of their employees and creating jobs for multiple people all because of a choice that I made to, you know, kind of step away so I can start to build something bigger. Um, so that's, that was really when I started to see that it was much easier to walk away from the install. And, um, and, and I still get to like, when we do the training and certification, I get to like physically work with them on jobs. So I get to be a part of that again, you know, occasionally. So, but yeah, it's, it's, um, you know, it, you know, it's a big thing, like financially too, to, um, you know, put somebody else in the truck, let them go work, um, and let them, you know, bring back the, you know, the check at the end of the job. And, you know, when you, once I kind of stepped out, it's, it's very hard, I think for a lot of us, because we built our business, like we started our business because we know how to do that thing. Um, whatever it is, you know, that's the reason why you started your business is probably because you, you know, you did landscaping. So you went into lighting, you know, you did cut the grass. So that's why you're a landscaper, you know, the things like that. So it's like, why, why would I want to stop like maintaining these people's property to walk away from it? Cause that's why I started the business. And so you have to like, almost like you're forced into now you have to learn business. You have to figure out these things because your business is going to grow and you need to have a whole different skill set. And that's where I reached out and seen where I was heading and really, you know, got into coaching programs and things like that to just continue to develop myself so that I can be a better leader, you know, for our team and, and for the business. No, that's awesome. I appreciate you sharing that. You know, I think uh, in the home service industry, there's a lot of different businesses that are in that. Uh, at least for me, like I didn't even think that like coaching was a thing. Like I just thought that was for somebody else or like a bigger company or whatever. And uh, I think I've seen that too because I'm I'm telling like I'm the landscape lighting co business coach and people are like, what is that? You know, uh, they don't realize that like even coaches have coaches and even CEOs of you know two hundred million dollar companies like they have coaches. Like you need someone to give you that that outside perspective and to challenge you and to push you and to to help you think bigger. Um, what is there, is there any experience you want to share of, of how a coach helped you uh, get to that next level? Oh man. It's not, it's not just like my coach. It's my community. Um, it's, you know, it's everybody that's been around to support me. So it's like, you know, you, you know, like I kind of got involved in some of these and it's like, even my, you know, the guys that I've coached or taught how to start this floor coatings business. It's like, they're the ones that are now, you know, like coaching me, you know, we get on zoom calls. I was on one this morning with Brian Crowder and, you know, we spent like an hour and it's like, you know, he's given back to me as much as I'm giving to him. So it's like, you, you know, you, you like, you know, you get involved in these groups and you're going to find yourself as part of a community. And, um, and, and, you know, it's like each person can, can give back to you. And so it's, it's not necessarily just your business coach it's your, it's your core group, you know, like we're in, you know, with three or four other businesses that meet once a week. Um, and then, you you know, you do one on ones with your coach so you can actually like work on something big, you know, that you're doing in your business one on one with your coach. So but um, yeah, I mean, Elena's done a lot, you know, for me. Um, she's helped me see a lot of different things. And I've been with her for, you know, uh, it's probably going on two and a half years now cons consistently, you know, I could, uh, choose to be in a different, you know, with a different coach, but it's like, I just really have a really good bond with her. And it's just like, I probably could reach out and get into a, you know, a different coach, get another perspective. And, you know, but I still have, like I said, the community of others around me that, um, really get a lot from. Yeah. So, well said. Yeah. I found that in, uh, my coaching program the same thing. It's like, I mean, I don't have, I tell everyone like, just so you know, if you're going to join, I don't know everything. I don't have all the answers. And even if I have an answer, you may not agree with it. Right. And so, um, there's the, the power of community. I totally underestimated. 
um, we'll get on these calls or just in the groups, whatever. And someone will have a question and then someone gives an answer that's just like totally left field for me, but it makes you think differently. And then you start, start going from there. And so, um, yeah, these coaching programs, I mean, you have to put effort into them, but the more effort you put in, the more you get out. So it's cool mm -hmm. to see you had such a good experience with that. Um, I, I want to ask like you the, just one more thing, Ryan is, is like what, what I really gained from, from my coach is accountability. So that's, you know, that was the main reason for me to join is, you know, I'm the sole proprietor. I don't have partner or anything. So I really wanted somebody that was going to hold me accountable and push me. So like, if you're, you're in your business on your own, you know, you don't have that accountability. Like that's, that was the biggest thing that I was looking for and what I received in return. So that's a big thing. Nice. That would probably be the number one thing. Okay, cool. Uh, that's awesome. Well, I want to ask you about, um, I, I understand you're the king of automations. I don't know if I made that up or not, but I know you like to use automations. Uh, yeah. I want to peel back the onion a little bit and uh, give us the goods, man. Give us the goods. Like what, I know you use a lot of different softwares, but are there some like main ones that you would suggest people look into and like some main strategies that you've found help kind of replace yourself in business and provide more value? Hmm, man, this is another one like the reviews. So, um, <laughs> I know there's a lot, but just like <laughs> there's a lot to unpack here. But I mean, mainly my tech stack um, is, you know, we have our CRM and then, you know, company cam is, you know, I, I love that for a, a lot of different aspects, but the company cam is basically just going to capture all your pictures, put them into job folders, make it very easy for, you know, when you have multiple employees that are taking photos and, you know, it's just, really hard. Like they keep them on their phone or, or whatnot, but company cam kind of pushes all those into a central place. Um, Geo tags them. So when you show up at the job site, you start taking pictures, the pictures go in the right folders. It's just, it's, it basically, you know, takes all the chaos of taking photos and really organizes it into really neat packages. And you can, you can do checklists and everything else off of uh, company cam. So that's like, um, a huge, you know, app that's really helped us out. Um, we use Airtable um, for a lot of our data. It's just a, you know, it's like I call it Excel on steroids. And so you can really create some um, different things of tracking numbers or pay for performance numbers, you know, um, all of our inventory, um, color flakes that we have in stock, what's available, you know. So we've, we've used that. Um, so, you know, it's, it's mainly just been the Airtable, um, company cam, our CRM is WorkEase, um, WorkEase makes work easy. So it is, um, it's in, you know, why I've chose that, um, CRM is mainly because I love automations. I like to kind of have a create your own, um, CRM and they've really been able to do that with, you can create any type of custom fields. And then through APIs with webhooks and things like that, you can pull all of those custom fields. So it makes it for all of our employees, they're all just on WorkEase and company cam. Um, but all of the data we can pull from them and push that into Airtable um, and so forth. So, okay. um, and, and are you, yeah, are go you, ahead. Are you using Zapier to help automate some of these things too? Yeah. Yep. Zapier makes, um, it connects, you know, we build out all the web hooks and things. So like basically when a lead comes in, it would actually create the job and company cam, and then it pushes the job into workies that'll assign the um, person. Um, and then, you know, probably the number one software, my favorite of all is response bid. So um, we kind of use that on the very front end and response bid can get, you know, together with crew cow, um, that's my biggest hang up is like, if I have a customer that's calling and inquiring, you know, when we have multiple salespeople and we cover, you know, four different major cities, um, how soon can I get there to give them an appointment? Cause I want that client to not be on the phone for 15 minutes while somebody's looking through maps and seeing where everybody's at. I want them to just be able to say, Hey, here's the address. Here's every day of the week. Here's where it fits in the time slot. It uses Google Drive time, you know, to calculate those distances between jobs. And my salespeople no longer are like 
you know, chasing leads like an hour away from each other. Like we're minimizing our fuel cost nice. and, you know, we're able to see, you know, five, six appointments a day versus two to three. Um, so it's, it's just, it's awesome. And then the bundling of the packages and so on where we upsell products and stuff like that. So that's awesome, man. Well, thanks for sharing that. I know like you're like, well, there's a lot more to it and stuff like that, but at least the, the reason I want people to understand that is because there's an easier way, you know, and I'm guilty of the hard way. Like, well, I'll just do everything manually, but if you can spend some time and this is what is, this is what is called working on your business is spend. Okay. Every Wednesday from two to five and every, you know, Friday from nine to one or whatever your hours are, like schedule those in to work. Like Lee couldn't have just done this, you know, uh, from four 30 to four 45 on Wednesday. He's put a lot of time, a lot of energy into this, but now that these things are built, there's a ton of automation that happens with every single step that he's not having to do. And so that's why he's so happy right now. Okay. <laughs> that's why he's still, he's still smiling. Um, and he's doing a $3 million business. So Thanks for sharing that. I just really kind of want to inspire people to think differently and understand mm -hmm. that there are technologies that are super helpful for us small business owners. Yes. So um, we had one question from uh, Keith. It's uh, what would you say is your biggest obstacle in growing your business today? Um, it would be like, you know, probably like... I don't know. It just depends on what day you ask me. <laughs> well, how about Tuesday at 5 PM Eastern? Yeah, no, it's, um, you know, some days it's like, you know, do you have enough employees? Um, a lot of it is just, you know, the biggest obstacle in growing it today is just, you know, it still comes down to me, you know, and, and just delegating tasks. Um, right now we're on the point of like our business has grown that, probably my next step is to get, you know, a really good general manager um, because we, we have multiple locations, um, you know, between Dayton, Cincinnati, Columbus, and Indianapolis, you know, it's, it's a big market to cover all of those areas. So, um, you know, it's kind of helping me divide out like the things that I can do. So, um, you know, and, and, you know, I, employees and finding employees, like we consistently keep our, you know, help wanted ads on. Um, we're always recruiting, always finding like top talent. Um, so we've created an awesome company culture. Um, you know, we've done some crazy things. I took my whole team to Vegas um, for the world of concrete. So it was like 15, 15 or 18 of us, like everybody in the company went. Um, so that was just like, a really good fun time to bond and just do something really crazy. So it's like, um, you know, really there's, I don't know really like where there's anything that's keeping us from growing as much as just keep moving forward. Um, you know, I just, we just got, uh, just picked up two more trucks, um, this week. So we're already building out two more crews. So we'll expand, to um, with the, our indie office and stuff, we're going to have nine crews running. So, um, just kind of like really looking and projections of like how you want to grow it. So we typically, you know, we grow the sales. And then once we see like we want to stay within 30 to 45 days out um, with customers, when we get to the 45 day mark, we're, you know, kind of um, looking to add another crew. And so once we get to like consistently 20 days, I then start, you know, looking at you know, our sales, I start buying equipment, I start, you know, really starting to bring people in and we just continue to grow. Okay. So I guess, I guess a follow-up to that question, cause like you said, it really, your next step is probably to get to that, you know, hire that general manager. Um, yeah. but that just depends on, you know, we all have different goals. Some people would get to your level and be like, Hey, this is it. You know, I'm happy doing what I'm doing. I fill in for a technician here and there. Uh, get to be as involved as I want, but I don't have to be every day. Um, but what are your plans? What are your plans for the future? Uh, specifically with, with this service business, not necessarily with your coaching and, you know, getting more dealers and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, we, um, it was, I mean, I gave my company a good test to see where we were at and see where our shortcomings was. Like I basically traveled, um, from, you know, basically left, uh, I think it was new year's day. We, we left and I was not back 
until the second week of March, um, you know, basically right after the BBB. And so, so, so just, only 10 weeks. Yeah. Yeah. I was gone <laughs> like 10 weeks through winter season and just like, you know, I, I was still in communication with my team, but I was not present. Um, so, you know, I was wanting to see, like, let's find out the areas of weakness. And I really had a strong team that just, it carried well. Um, so it, it was good for me to see that. And so, you know, kind of the, I don't know, like, I'm, I'm somebody, you know, it was neat when we purchased the trucks this week, like we went into the dealership and we met the owner and he's, you know, in his eighties and he clearly doesn't need to be there but he's like sitting in this nice office and like, you know, we bought, you know, the trucks and he wanted to come out and meet us. And he's like, come in my office. And he's telling us about his family and how he built the business. And, and Russell, my project manager was with me. I'm like, you see, I was like, you know, the guy's sitting here talking to us and I'm like, this is me. Like, I'm always going to be that guy in the corner office. You're never going to get rid of me. And Russell's just laughing. And, you know, so, you know, I don't think like really I have like this big plan to like, you know, grow a business and sell it or anything like that. Like, it's just like, I love what I'm doing. Like, um, you know, I'm in my place and, and, you know, teaching and training the dealers is just like, just the big add on, um, to it, you know? So. Okay, cool. Well, you, you touched on culture for a minute, how you've got these, I mean, one, you were able to leave for a long period of time. Uh, then you took your team to Vegas and stuff like that. So let's talk about team members and culture to kind of close out the show. Um, my question, my first question is, how do you convince someone that they want to be a concrete coatings technician? Yeah. So what else is there to do other than be a concrete coatings technician? So, But you've got to have some awesome culture, obviously, because it's not yeah. like people grew up going, man, one day if I could just work for Lee being a concrete floor coatings technician, you know? <laughs> um, I mean, the big thing is, is I, you know, we make it enjoyable. Like, if you really think about, you know, I mean, we're like, you know, several other service businesses, but if, you know, uh, we hire young, so we, you know, we get like the, you know, kids right out of high school are the best for me. Like I love to mentor them. I love to see them get their first car, you know, buy their first house, have get engaged, get married, have kids. Like I've seen it all. I've, I've seen all of my employees grow to that level. And that's, you know, why I like to retain them and keep them around as I like to continue to see them grow. Um, but it's, you know, we've just, I mean, we've created a family atmosphere where people just know we care. Um, that's the biggest thing is like the employees know we care. Our customers know we care. Um, it's, you know, uh, the, the thing is, it, you know, the hardest thing for us is, you know, it's, it's hard to like, really show them what they're going to be doing on a day-to-day -day basis. So we do bring every candidate in for a test job. And so they work alongside with us for a day. They get to go out with our guys. They get to, you know, you know, see how they fit in with the attitudes of the different guys. And, you know, um, we just, we always, like, I can really tell when a guy comes in, like, Hey, he's going to fit well within our culture. And, you know, the guys that don't work past that day, are kind of the ones that the guys in our field would tell me like, it ain't going to work out. And, you know, it's either, you know, we let them know it's not going to work out or they just don't come back, you know, too, because they know that they're not, you know, a fit. So, you know, the culture is really strong here. Um, and we, we've built that and, and I'm very proud of, of the culture we have. It's not, you know, it's not for everybody. It's very long hours. You know, we work six in the morning, um, typically to six and night, it's 12 hour days. We work four day work weeks. So we give, um, there's, you know, they're off Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and we, you know, we respect that. Um, and so, you know, sometimes, you know, with the pay for performance, the guys can actually be done at, you know, two o'clock, you know, one o'clock, three o'clock, and they don't have to worry about, Hey, well, I need to stick around and get like my hours in for overtime. You know, it's, they're still rewarded the same on the job, whether it takes them, you know, eight hours or 12 hours to finish it. So we've just done some unique things that um, really has created a really nice culture. And um, I think most of our employees, you know, like they really like to brag about where they work. They like to tell others about, you know, what it is they do. So nice. um, it's it's been neat to build. 
Yeah, I remember actually the first time we met, you were telling me about your four day work week. And I thought that was interesting um, because for me, I'd be tempted to be like, okay, we'll do four days. But then like, you know, you get that person's like, well, I can go with you, but I need it done by this date. I'm like, hey guys, <laughs> can you work Friday and then maybe Saturday? Uh, yeah. do, you, do you get tempted with that or no? Um, yeah, I mean, if you dig really hard in our reviews, you'll find actually a negative review because we just told somebody we're not going to work, you know, when they wanted us to, um, I think it was actually on a Saturday and he's like, well, I, you know, I work through the week and I need you guys to be here on Saturday. It's like, well, you just said it like you, <laughs> you're off on the weekends, but you want us to work. I was like, no, I was like, we're not doing your job. And it was a repeat customer, but it was just like, you know, I'm sorry. You know, I, you know, I respect my employees more than, you know, pushing them to that level. Now, do we have like commercial jobs or job specific? Yes, we get, you know, we do, you know, subway floors, you know, for the subway sandwich, you know, rebuilds and, you know, they shut down. We do some commercial spaces, um, kitchens and things like that, that we know in a, you know, ahead of uh, time to where we can plan in advance to say, hey, you know, out of the, you know, 12 guys we have in the field, two or three of them will always like say, yeah, I'll do it because they know that we respect it. We're not going to ask them to do it if we really didn't need them to. Yeah. Okay, cool. And just to clarify, you'll pay them, like you said, per job. Uh, it's not necessarily like them just going, well, let's slow down because we need to get our hours in this week or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It's a pay for performance model that we have. So they get a percentage of the job and we still keep track of their hours. So if they have overtime, they get paid overtime and then, you know, they get their bonus on top of that. Cool. Yeah. Uh, just to be a little bit vulnerable here, uh, but in a good way. So what's some, maybe a mistake that you made along the way um, that you'd encourage others not to do, you know, any helpful words of wisdom to close it out? Man. <laughs> I mean, I know like there's, <laughs> <laughs> there's been some crazy things that I have done. Um, but uh, it's, it's always come out to be, you know, I, I've stretched myself like financially, cash flow to build the business. You know, um, the building I'm in now is I think our first building. And, you know, I bought the land um, and I wanted to build this building. And I was just like, you know, but there was just the land. There was no collateral for the bank to give me a loan. And I'm like, I do have personal credit cards and like I maxed out like every personal credit card I had. I took like a QuickBooks loan. Like I had like all, you know, my credit score went from, you know, 700 to like 400 because I maxed out everything personally. I just took this huge gamble, but I built this awesome facility that we've been able to train people in. And, you know, once we got through that um, and we, you know, we just, we sold more jobs, we installed more, I ended up paying off all of my personal debt within about four months of building this building. Um, but it was just like, it was just one of those things. Like, would I recommend it? I would, I would, I don't know. Like I wouldn't say yes. And I wouldn't say no, but I would also like say, Hey, like in business, there's going to be times like you're going to have to take that gamble if you want to get to the next step and you can't do it by sitting on your hand. So like, that's the biggest thing I'd leave anybody with is like, push yourself, like push your, you know, push yourself to get to that next level. Like you're just not, it's not going to get there by, you know, by just keeping doing, you know, just keep doing the average thing. Like, you know, um, you know, I'm where I'm at because others have pushed me, but I've also like, I pushed myself. So it's not, like it's not easy what we've created. Here. I love that, man. Yeah, it's hard to encourage someone to go take out tons and tons of debt. But I think, like you said, the point was you're willing to take some risks. And of course, they're calculated risks. But if you really want to get to the next level, if you want to succeed in business, if you look at all the top dogs, they all took on a lot of risk. And, you know, you don't your goal doesn't have to be the top dog. But I feel like there is a direct ratio there. Like the, the higher the risk you're willing to take, the higher potential that you have. So thanks for sharing that, man. I appreciate it. Um, 
Yeah. Before we we'll just before we wrap up, uh, I understand you're launching your new podcast. So um, I guess how can people get a hold of you? How can they find out what the podcast is and when it is and all that stuff? Yeah, so we're we're launching a podcast. So it's home service business success secrets. So basically, my key was, or you know, why I wanted to do this was, you know, it's kind of right. You know, we hit on a lot of things here is it's like kind of where I was, like I was kind of in the field as this owner entrepreneur and like, I wasn't quite making enough money where I could actually just go be a part of a coaching group and stuff like that. So a lot of the little things that I learned along the way and, and the successes and the failures that I've had, um, I want to just share those and get those out. So maybe it inspires other people. Um, that's kind of, you know, I, like I said, I hire young guys. I love to see them like, you know, shape and mold into like, you know, being their own people and, and starting, you know, I have one guy that's actually starting his landscaping business that works with us. And I've been like working with him on profit and loss and getting insurance and setting up his articles of organization and stuff like that. So it's just, it's neat to be able to give back to people. And, um, you know, the real short podcasts, they want to keep them like under 20 minutes. So like, no matter where you're at, if you just got a short car ride, you can, you know, put it on and listen and hopefully you can get some inspiration from it. So it will be launching, I think here in the second week of, um, of May, uh, I think it's the 18th is when it's going to launch. So, um, just, you know, if, if you want to friend me on Facebook, I'll be announcing, you know, like when we're going to be launching it, um, and so forth. So we'll have, we'll have some more stuff coming out. Awesome, man. Well, listen, congratulations to you, your successes and everything. I really appreciate your insight. Um, I learned a lot today. I hope everyone else did as well. I'm, I'm confident they did. But thanks so much for being here, man. Really appreciate you. Awesome, man. Thanks for having me. All right, guys. Remember, take one thing away from everything you go to. So pick one thing that Lee said, and don't just get inspired, but actually take action. All right, guys. We'll see you next week. <laughs>